Hey everyone, uh, so someone asked me uh, some time ago what I thought of the Venus Project and I forgot to get back to them, uh, but the Venus Project has recently released a 50 odd minute uh, documentary, so it's as good a time as any to talk about the Venus Project. Now, uh, it's uh, the brainchild of Jacques Fresco, I believe, um, he's... I think he's American or Canadian or something like that. Um, and he's kind of, a, I guess, a visionary or something along those lines. It was associated with the Zeitgeist movement, although Fresco has been doing this for decades. Um, but then I guess they kind of uh, grew apart over different issues. Um, and so the Zeitgeist movement, and I'll link the documentary below. Um, to sum it up really briefly, it's about building futuristic cities. Uh, it's about a resource-based economy, which basically means that you uh, have really efficient production that produces so much stuff that there is no more scarcity. Um, and therefore it fulfills all human needs and money is abolished and that's pretty much it really um, like get rid of money build factories that produce everything and then people can pick that stuff up at these centers and return it or not and everyone's happy ever after and we also have blueprints for futuristic cities with a lot of domes um seriously like you know it's it's almost almost it almost looks like a parody of some kind of socialist or communitarian utopia um because it is on the face of it and unfortunately in my eyes when you look any deeper uh quite ridiculous um because it's all this like you s you listen to it and there's these terms like resource based economy and then you know they explain and it's like yeah well through advances in technology we'll just be able to produce lots of stuff and then we'll get rid of money and people just pick it up from the center um and don't pay money for it and money's been abolished and you're always waiting for the explanation of how this should work, how you know the production is going to be this efficient, or how people aren't going to all take an iPod 3 and a Mercedes every time a new model comes out, and like everything else. Um, and that explanation never comes. And then you know you like I've seen people pose these challenges, and they're answered by like, well there will be these amazing engineers and then all of the people will give their preferences into a computer and it will produce the perfect product which never answers any of the questions and it's kind of it's like usual it's this kind of cycle where you know there's always these magical technology solutions to everything um that's really you know like you need some kind of Dios ex machina to make this kind of stuff work and in this case it's mainly technology but if you watch the documentary I link below I mean I think I'm paraphrasing here but there's lots of ridiculous things in that documentary like at one point he's talking about war and how it sucks and I can agree with that but then he says like instead of sending soldiers and giving them a weapon you send them to a school where they learn how to be diplomatic and then you send them out everywhere else and then by being really diplomatic they'll kind of make everyone get along something along those lines and it's just like i don't know it's it's very nice touchy-feely stuff but it seems to me like it's at like you know the sixth grader level it's not really ready for the big time at all this 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 plan it's not a theory because there's nothing you know th there's just so many pieces missing um it kind of reminds me of there's this cartoon um and i you know how it basically goes is this like this this guy and he's really excited about this presentation he's giving he's like oh look at this and he's got this flow chart and he's like oh look at this here's where we are here's the amazing results and it's revolutionary and then in the middle is like a big box with a question mark on it 
to me, that's the Venus Project. The actual stuff that you would want to yeah, know, how it's going to do all of these magical things, all of this technology that it keeps talking about, that's in the question mark box, you know. Um, and given this kind of technology, which it seems to presuppose, lots of systems could work. It offers nothing significant or interesting, um, unfortunately. So if I had to sum up my feelings about it, the goals I am very sympathetic towards. Um, the goals are very, you know, um, community oriented and very egalitarian uh, and concerned the reduction of suffering on an egalitarian basis, which is what I love. Um, that said, choosing goals is obviously the easiest thing and you don't really score a lot of brownie points for choosing good goals because choosing goals is easy as for the strategy there is very little there i mean most of it seems to be pictures of future cities with a lot of domes in it that kind of look like something from 1965 and these cities don't have as far as I can tell and as far as the website last time I looked at which was some time ago you know like people tell you look at the website it's all explained there and then you go there and it's not all explained there it's just like pretty pictures and you go to the center and pick up everything you need which is not an explanation if you have a better explanation and you're familiar with the Venus project please let me know um, but please make sure that it doesn't involve um, getting amazing new technology and please don't make the claim that not building weapons will suddenly solve all of the world's problems and mean that there's no more scarce, uh, scarcity because whilst stopping war and building weapons will create you know that wealth is a lot of wealth that will be very helpful it's not enough to end scarcity um, and that's my biggest bone I have to pick with the Venus Project. Um, this underlying tenet, uh, this idea, their idea is basically just, well, once we get this stuff going, there's not going to be scarcity, so you don't have to worry about any of the problems associated with scarcity, so we can get rid of money and that stuff that people used to worry about, greed and being angry at each other because they didn't have stuff, that's all going to be gone because they've got all the stuff. Um, no, <laughs> you haven't gotten rid of the problem. You've just, uh, you've just poofed it out of existence. You've just said, oh, it won't exist anymore. It exists and you haven't proposed any way of getting rid of it. So unless you have like a perpetual motion machine and one of those microwaves from Star Trek that makes anything you want in it and then you can like have everything it's just not like that you haven't solved the problem and then the big issue is that the big ethical dilemma behind the world today is that problem is how do we distribute stuff is it fair for people that have uh, lots of power to get stuff is it fair for people that produce more to get more how much more or uh, should people get roughly the same share um, if not, then sh is the reason why we should give people a bigger share, the Rawlsian kind of idea that that would maximize what the least get, or is it just because the people that produce more actually deserve more? These are all very interesting ethical questions, and you're just sidestepping them by saying scarcity doesn't matter because we won't have scarcity once we have a resource-based economy, which we'll do by having magical technology. Um, that's my opinion on the Venus Project.